you know, uh, in America, we've, we've created a $14 trillion economy for a lot of different reasons, but one of the most important reasons that we've been able to do it is because we have had safe, abundant, reliable electricity. And uh, that hasn't come about very easily. Uh, we've had people invest billions of dollars on infrastructure for generating and transmitting and distributing uh, electricity. And today, uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, when I was driving up here, I saw uh, an electric car over here plugged in by the Cannon Building. And uh, we have great hope for electric cars. But it reminded me, just a few days ago, I read an article that was a copy of a 1917 New York Times newspaper that said electric cars are the wave of the future. <laughs> so it seems like we made great progress in a very short period of time. We are real fast. <laughs> and you know, uh, the energy debate today, uh, obviously, has been going on throughout the history of our country. But I, 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 I sort of narrow it down to six words today, the, the simplified version. Fossil fuel bad, green energy good. Now, I say that not because I have anything against green energy. We all support green energy. We all recognize we have to have green energy. But to be truthful, I think the Obama administration has oversold green energy. And I say that because I was reading also an article or a book written by George McKay, a professor at Cambridge in, in, in Great Britain. And uh, the title of this book was Sustainable Energy Without the Hot Air. And then another book written by uh, Scott Montgomery, who's a geologist uh, in, through the University of Chicago Press, uh, was entitled The Powers That Be. And both of these books talked about the importance of green energy. But Montgomery said it was pure fantasy to think that any time in the near future, America's electricity demand was going to be met by green energy. And uh, McKay said the same thing, basically. He, basically, he approached it a little bit different. <laughs> He said, oh, yeah, we can, we can generate a lot of green energy, but we have to face the reality of the cost of it. And uh, can America increase its generation of electricity to a degree and still be able to remain competitive in the global marketplace, particularly when you have countries like China that last year, we, we met with a group of Chinese, and I'm sure Richard's been to China and met with them also, but they indicated to us that they, uh, last year, brought online two, uh, one new coal power plant every two weeks. And when I met recently with Mike Ward, the chairman of CSX Railroads, he said the railroads are moving more coal to the ports for export to China than at any time in their history. And they also are buying more coal from Australia than at any time in their history. And, in the, and when the Obama administration came forth with their stimulus package, billions of dollars of that money went for green energy projects. And uh, as I said, that's okay, but let's not mislead the American people to believe that green energy is going to even come close to meeting the demands of electricity in America, which by the year 2035 is, is supposed to increase another 40 percent or so. So uh, I, I think the administration is misleading the American people. I, I, uh, I know now when they talk about green energy, they don't talk about it from a perspective of creating energy. They, they talk about it from the perspective of where oh, this is about creating jobs. But uh, as someone who represents a coal state, we'd like to keep our jobs, too. I don't mind Silicon Valley and California creating their jobs, but don't take our jobs away from us. And uh, I don't think they can because I don't think that they can compete with uh, fossil fuel for producing energy. 
Now, reckon, I also recognize, obviously, that, uh, uh, and that's why we get upset about so m many billions of dollars going for green, uh, green energy. Uh, we, we do need to continue to spend money for research and development on even cleaner coal. Uh, because we still do have a 250-year reserve of coal in, in America. Uh, and then when you consider that the Obama administration recently came out with this pronouncement that they wanted to reduce the 2005 emissions from generating plants by 87 percent in the year 2030, by the year 2035. Well, you almost know something's wrong here because that, that's kind of complicated, isn't it? We're going to reduce the 2005 emissions by 87 percent by 2035. Well, why don't they just come out and say we're going to not allow the tons of emission to be above this level? Well, I think the reason is that if you analyze that, really look at that, what they're saying is we're not going to have emissions greater than what we had in the 1920s. Now, I would remind you that in the 1920s, only 2 percent of rural Americans in their homes had electricity. Only 50 percent in all the rest of the country had electricity. We didn't have any cell phones. We didn't have any computers. We didn't have any iPods or iPads. So the reality and the possibility of getting that kind of reduction, I think, is a pipe dream. <coughs> now, having said that, I would be the first to say that we need an energy policy of all of the above. We need wind power. We need uh, hydro power. We need everything. But this administration has made it almost impossible to get a permit to mine coal. And any time you, you file a permit today to mine coal, build a, a, a coal generating plant, the first thing that you're going to face is a lawsuit. I had a group in yesterday who are building a $700 million project, want to build a $700 million project. They're filing their permits. They've already been sued. And that's just a course of business, these lawsuits. So uh, that, that's one of the reasons also that I think you see Congress trying to reassert itself uh, in the area of environmental protection. Uh, because Congress really has not done very much in that area since 2000, I mean, since 1990 when the last Clean Air Act amendments were adopted. And as a result, many of the decisions made over there have been made by the court system and by unelected uh, officials who work at EPA. And uh, even John Dingell said it would be a glorious mess if EPA tried to start regulating greenhouse gases because that act was not designed to regulate greenhouse gases. So uh, the committee that I'm involved in with Fred Upton and others, uh, we're, we're having a lot of hearings with EPA. Uh, and they're already sick of us, and we're almost sick of them too. But, uh, but uh, we're asking the questions, and uh, we're having a dialogue, and we're going to come forth with a lot of legislation, and we're going to pass a lot of legislation, changing some of the things they're doing down there that we believe is not the right thing to do. And then we'll send it over to the Senate, and Richard Burr and others will make the decisions on what they want to do uh, in the U.S. Senate. Now, let me just make one brief comment on renewable, a renew, federal renewable energy standard or a federal clean energy standard. I'm opposed to it, which probably is not a surprise to anybody. But I, I, let me give you some of the reasons why. I know, first of all, we have about 25 states that have already adopted them. And I have no objection to states adopting whatever standards they want to about how their electricity is generated. But I noticed that also in Arizona and Missouri, and Missouri recently did it, they're already involved in lawsuits. Because when we say 20 percent of your electricity is going to be generated by renewables by date certain, does that mean generated in the state? Or does that mean it can be bought out, out of the state, imported into the state? Uh, can you actually build these new capacities uh, by the year 2020? 
uh, what impacts it going to have on reliability because you're going to have to have additional transmission lines. Who's going to pay for those? So for the federal government to be jumping in at this time when we haven't even really determined what the cost allocation should be on new transmission lines, who's going to pay for them? And that's something that FERC is dealing with right now. So for the federal government to just jump in and say, okay, 2020, you got to have 20 percent of your electricity produced from renewables, I think is the wrong policy. So uh, when I was coming over here this morning, some, one, one of my staffers said, well, you've got to tell them about what you're going to do, what you think about renewable energy. So I'm telling you, I'm opposed to a federal renewable energy mandate. Thank you very much. <laughs>